Hello and welcome everyone, Frog here. Today I'll be reviewing Untamed Tactics, a tactical RPG roguelike game. I've received a key from the publisher to review this game, so I'll simply say that I will do my best to avoid any bias. There is also gonna be no spoilers at all. I also have spent roughly 39 hours on this game. The game isn't particularly hard, it is simply too long and monotonous in my opinion. Let's not waste any more time and talk about the story of the game. You'll be following the adventure of Greycoat and his friends after their ship crash on the shore of a faraway island. You'll have to fight the natives there as they aren't the most welcoming people. And you'll discover by going further into the story a bit more about each character and their past to finally have to unite everyone against a bigger threat. Now the story is very secondary in my opinion and I'm not gonna lie. I do not remember most of it, except maybe the ending, but since I'm not gonna spoil, I'll avoid to talk about it here. It's quite rare that it happened, but even though I did read everything, I forgot most of it. Maybe because I really wasn't interested in it, and that the story bits were few and far between. You'll be starting off your adventures with three characters, and will eventually unlock two other ones later on. Each character in this game is an anthropomorphic animal. Greycoat is a bunny, Lynn is a fox, Mortimer is a lizard, maybe a chameleon. And the two last ones you'll unlock are a tiger and a hippo. The story mode is divided in four acts that take roughly 20 to 25 hours to finish. Each act will have different characters and reset your levels. Once you start to play, you will have access to the world map and will have to decide of a path to reach your destination. There is some time a choice between two paths to take. Not every single area is the same. Some of them are simple fights, where killing the enemies is required. Some others are escape battle, where two out of your three characters need to escape to complete it. And sometimes, there is an event with some random NPCs or some random talk. Those usually can lead to a fight, a stat increase, a loot or nothing. And then there is the random event that can be anything. The final area of any map is often a boss, but not always. While I do not think I've ever had a game over in this game to try, I believe the story mode do not have any mechanic that can make you restart from the beginning. But you'll have access to some upgrades in something that is called the Wall of Wisdom, which is basically the usual tree with some perks in it. It isn't really massive though, and can be quickly completed. In order to purchase perks in this wall of wisdom, you need wisdom points that you'll obtain sometime in the story and later on more easily in the adventure mode. Now one big problem of the game is that it wasn't rare for me to go from area to area to fight the exact same fight twice in a row. And when I say exact same fight, I mean it. Same map, same enemies, same everything. It happened to me three times in a row once. I do not think the maps and enemies are randomized, but actually all sets. And there isn't really a huge number of them, because fighting the same fights I've done before, I've had that a dozen of times. Easily. Outside of that, I believe the Wall of Wisdom is stupidly small for a roguelite. There is 19 upgrades in total, nothing more. Now that can be fine if the ID is for a small game, but I believe the game here is way too repetitive and those upgrades aren't even remotely fun. Most of the upgrades are the usual stuff you'll see to have better loot or to have more slots of skills or equipment on your characters. Very basic stuff. Whenever a battle will break out, you'll be moving from the world map to a battle map with a grid. Every map varies in size, and not every enemy will attack you straight away. Some maps are a bit bigger and have enemies further away from you that sleep until you come closer, which make it obviously easier to deal with them. There is a lot of obstacles everywhere on each map. Those can be useful as the game have a lot of abilities to push enemies and deal damage to them with those side obstacles. There will be some tiles with diverse things on them as well, such as bushes that increase your dodge chance, water that reduce your defense, the usual poison, lava that deal damage to you, and the not so usual holy that increase your attack. I wouldn't necessarily call the level design great or genius, but there are some possibilities to play around. I believe it remains a bit too simple still, and you might grow bored of pushing people into rocks after a few hours, but there are some possibilities still. Some spells will allow you to create obstacles or to change the ground as well, which is also something cool. As for the world, there is some interesting things, but it's not pushed and is simply the minimum to serve the story. There is four different maps with different biomes, 
Desert, Jungle, Corruption, and Technology. Depending on the biome you're in, the combat maps will be different as well. The setting of the game could be interesting, but is really minimalistic in my opinion. The world didn't convince me at all. Outside of that, there is a lot of dialogues, be it for the story or random events, and those are whatever, not particularly well written, but it isn't a mess either. Most of it is just uninteresting. I'll have to say though that most random events have dialogues that have a lot of different options and different unique rewards for each choice, and those are in my opinion much better. There is creativity in those and it is in my opinion one of the few things I've appreciated about the game. There is a few cute scenes in the game and those have voice dialogues, but outside of that, you will have to read. Now we'll talk about the gameplay more in depth. As said before, Untamed Tactics is a tactical RPG, roguelite hybrid. You'll possess three characters in each fight, never more, never less. Your choice will be quite limited in the story mode, as you cannot really choose your team, but once you unlock the adventure mode, you'll be able to pick your three characters from any of the five. Each character has up to four classes, three in the base game and one locked behind the DLC. Each of those classes have something special to start with, but you'll gain more skill as you progress through the maps and each run should feel more or less different, depending on the upgrades you'll see. Each character starts with a set of skills and a defensive skill, depending on the class you've picked for them, but after that it's all up to you and what you'll get. Every time your character will level up, you'll be able to pick one skill between three random choices. A defensive skill is activated every time you get attacked, but only once per turn. You'll be able to choose another defensive skill after some level up. I do not actually remember how many, but the possibility is there. You'll have three choices to choose from, and those do not seem to be random, but to be unique to each character. Outside of this, you'll have other types of upgrades. The gems that will improve your skills with a passive, for example, a chance to poison the enemy every time you cast it, increases damage or lots of other effects similar to that. The runes that give passives to the whole character, for example a very good one that I remember is every time you use parley you gain permanently one attack for the remainder of the run. I'll talk very soon about parley, that is a unique mechanic to the game, but that is insanely broken too. And last upgrades are books that are unlimited and increase stats without any drawbacks. For example, you can buy some at the merchant at the beginning of your run, and the effects of those books are always about boosting your stats. They are quite useful and can be looted in chests in the minimap or as rewards by completing an area too. Every time you complete a world map in adventure mode, you'll come back to your camp and will be able to purchase from two different merchants. All of those upgrades I've just mentioned, in case you didn't loot what you want, as you'll get coined by opening chests and going from an area to the next. Those merchants also sell potions that are one-time use consumable, with diverse effects that are lootable as well. Basically everything the merchant sells is lootable. The Wall of Wisdom is also available in the camp in case you need to upgrade it. And finally, you'll be able to craft runes and gems if you desire to do it with artifacts. Basically, artifacts are resources that you'll keep from one playthrough to the next and that allow you to craft gems and runes that you've already obtained in a previous playthrough. You can also purchase some of them from the merchant. I have no idea if you can abuse that by buying them and restarting a game to have the starting gold resetted, but if it is the case, it will be completely broken. I've barely used those personally, I didn't need to craft any gem or rune to end the game in the hardest difficulty because two characters are completely broken. Let's now talk about the parlay mechanic that is some kind of mechanic unique to the game. So basically, every time you'll be using a skill, you'll fill the parlay gauge. Once full, you'll be able to talk to your enemies with various effects. Basically, each character has five parlay cards. They are not random but set, and every character have a different set of them. Whenever you'll be casting parlay after your gauge is full, you'll have randomly a choice between three of your five cards. Each enemy have a personality type, and each card have a personality type that they are strong against. Again, it is set. Each type of enemy will have a defined personality. It isn't random. So by playing, you'll always know which enemy is gonna be what. Those cards are powerful overall, but I'm not gonna beat around the bush. There is one in the lot that is particularly nasty and can destroy the game by itself. And anyone having played the game know that it is seductive remark. This card is available to Lin and Greycoat, and that's all. 
And its effect is simple. It removes an enemy from the game, and if that enemy is enthusiastic as a personality trait, he'll join your side and fight his mates. There is some things to know in this game. You'll always control your three units, but the summons and traitor play by themselves, which isn't necessarily bad either. Also, the enthusiastic personality type is common early on, but become rarer in the last maps, I admit. Now, there wouldn't be any problem if that parlay gauge would be somewhat hard to increase, but buffs tend to increase that gauge extremely quickly, and Greco possess a huge AoE buff from the start that allow for you to get half of it easily, and if you have summons and traitors, you can easily cast parlay every turn with him. Now, what I mean with all this is that every single other ability from Parley seems lackluster compared to this one. The others are simply reducing stats of an enemy, dealing some type of damage, stealing gold, well you see what I mean. Basically this is so strong you might not even want to use anything else. Even if the enemy isn't enthusiastic, it's still a one-shot ability that can hit anyone on the map. I don't know if it works on bosses though, I've never tried, but if it does it will be even worse. I'm not crying for a nerf, I actually like broken stuff. What I'm trying to tell you is that the game has broken balance and it's maybe better to like that to enjoy this game. And that the game lack in diversity cause actually turning enemies into allies is somewhat fun. And the other possibilities are simply not fun at all in my book and should be stronger. All these make it that this mechanic was simply for me some kind of snipe or to create a traitor in the enemy backlines and nothing more when it should maybe be something more creative. Let's now talk about the difficulty and content. Difficulty wise, Untamed Tactics is overall quite simple. As I've mentioned before, you can cheese the game quite easily and overall the game ain't very hard. There is four different difficulty levels. Beginner, Adventurer, Expert and Tactician. I've played through all of them for at least one run in Adventure Mode and while Tactician is definitely harder, there is some things that make it easier. First of all, obviously if you abuse the parry skill I've mentioned earlier, you'll have allies with huge stats since they will basically be the same as the enemies. And since in this difficulty, enemies have high health points, they will too. And secondly, every summons get to have higher stats too for whatever reason, which will help you if you use characters using them. If you were to decide to play with another strategy, I believe the game might be harder, as the characters tend to start each run quite weak to become more powerful toward the end. As for the content, you'll have two game modes, the story mode and the adventure mode. You need to complete the story mode to have access to the adventure mode, and that will take around 20 hours to do so. Both modes are quite similar in the way they function. Story modes have a story, but also have the world map and lets you choose what path you take. You'll power up through each act by getting runes, gems and book, and at every new arc you'll be back to square one. While the adventure mode will always be two maps plus one boss and it's over, and I believe the maps are shorter as well in the adventure mode than in story. You'll be able to choose the world map you want to go through whenever you complete one, but the boss is random between the four world maps. Out of my four runs, the last boss from the last run wasn't even a boss, but the same map I've had just beaten before, even though it was supposed to be one. So in my opinion, content-wise, it is lacking. You'll be able to spend time on the game to finish the story, but the game feels unfinished. There is a ton of problems, I've even seen some people complain about their save being deleted cause of a bug, and I've also had a bug myself that stopped me from completing an escape mission. Luckily the developer was quick to patch it, even though he was on holidays, so props to him for that. I don't think they are bad guys, but clearly there is something missing. The game feels very repetitive and monotonous. As for the graphics and soundtrack, well, the graphic style isn't my cup of tea, but I do not think it is ugly either. We're in the average territory in my opinion. Animations are abysmal. It is like the minimum efforts possible. There is like one animation for everything each character do, and it's really basic. As for the soundtrack, I personally didn't like it. I think it lacks something and it is too basic. But I tend to call average everything that doesn't make me want to rip my ears off. And I can't say that the soundtrack here was aggressive to my ears. But honestly, don't expect anything from it. It's aiming more toward the low rather than the good. The sound design is a bit better though. I don't remember anything horrible with it. So it was probably doing the job without being incredible. Conclusion? Untamed Tactics is a game that feels unfinished to me. And I'm not gonna lie, I had struggled to finish it. It gave me many headaches because of how boring it was. 
you will often be playing the same missions over and over again with no differences, because as far as I've seen, each map has always the same type of enemies at the same place every time you play it. The gameplay, while being interesting, isn't deep enough and lacks something to make it better. The parley system could have been great on paper, but it's simply not very fun, as most of the choices are generic and boring. The only fun one is a broken ability you spam to destroy anyone with a reach on the whole map and that can turn your enemies into allies. The soundtrack is also quite basic, and this game has some of the worst animation I've seen in a game that I've reviewed. There is a few technical problems also, I've seen people whine about their save being deleted, and as mentioned earlier, I was stuck in a map because of a bug that is now fixed. And while it is a pretty simple game with few units to control, I still wouldn't suggest it to newcomers to tactical RPGs. As this game, in my opinion, isn't good enough and might push people to not try better titles later on. I'm gonna be honest, I do not like to be bashing on a game, but I simply think this one should have been in development a little longer, and I honestly struggle to find anything good to say about it. In my opinion, there is good ideas, but those aren't pushed enough and every single part of the game has flaws. I wouldn't be able to tell you what could make you want to play this game. In case you wanna try, the best part of the game are definitely story and gameplay, but those do not shine enough to me to call them good. So, in short, my opinion is that this game should be avoided, but that's simply my opinion. If you believe this game is interesting and you want to play it, go for it and tell me your opinion about it. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this game. For now though, this is the end of the video. I wish you guys a good day, take care and see you next video.